we were really grateful that Hubble and Hattie were um, prepared to take the book, that it fitted with, with the philosophy, because um, we believed in it so strongly and we were very grateful that we could, could publish it. It will help puppies grow into resilient dogs who can cope with the stresses that life throws at them and therefore be less likely to exhibit some of the problems that we see. Pete was on the ground with his at puppy level to get the, the, the photographs at puppy level uh, with his ca camera shooting, um, shooting constantly. I think probably the most enjoyable part was going through the images and seeing the, the fun that the puppies had been having in the photo shoots that um, was great, was very enjoyable. We are really hoping that the book will help prevent the development of behaviour problems in dogs. Daniel and I have many years of experience in dealing with patients in the clinical context, in a behaviour clinic, and we came to realise over the years that there are certain character traits or behaviours which dogs show which are rooted in um, underlying behaviours which we believe are shapeable in the young dog to avoid problems later in life. So for example, um, dogs who are very impulsive, if we can teach them to be less impulsive when they're younger, may predispose to, to certain problems not being as, as prominent later on frustration tolerance, dogs that are frightened of things. So it was, it was seeing the patients and believing that we could make a difference to change um, behaviours early and prevent problems from uh, occurring later. The main philosophy behind life skills is helping puppies to live in harmony with the people that they live with in such a manner that they are they learn how to be well behaved they don't have to be controlled they don't yes obedience is important but it's not about a person controlling their behavior all the time it's about them learning a way of of living with their families which where they choose to 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 do the right things where they choose to make the correct choices but they're still allowed to be dogs so it's a philosophy of a partnership between humans who understand and respect what their what their dogs are and dogs who are able to make the correct choices to live in what is a very demanding uh, um, modern society for them. Puppy training became popular um, from around the 80s onwards and there are some very very good training programs of puppies worldwide by, by leaders in the field. Um, what we see as the main difference, and, and I must say that we, do, we don't say that the book takes the place of, of going to, attending a good puppy class, finding an, a really good quality puppy class we would encourage everybody to do. But what the book does is it, it aims to take a slightly different perspective. Classes tend to teach more obedience type behaviors and, and some of the socialization and habituation skills, but the book tries to help people to apply principles within their everyday life so that they're creating a way of being with their dog where they are using everyday experiences to shape their puppy's behavior outside of the class situation. So it's helping them to see that yes you can be taught to teach your puppy to sit or, or taught to teach your puppy to stay in a class situation but how does that translate to helping your puppy to be well behaved around the house? So. Definitely um, not taking the place of puppy classes, but over and above. Um, and we, d we are also very well aware that some people um, won't take their puppies to puppy classes. And we would hope that um, for those people, the book will at least help them to create a well-behaved puppy. The 10 skills we worked through um, as a starting point, as I said uh, earlier, the, problem, the main problem areas that we see in behaviour cases, and we looked at what we believe were the underlying skills from, um, from those problems. So what skills, if the puppy had certain skills, 
would it prevent it? Did we believe it would prevent certain problems? Because we don't have science to, to validate that at this point. Um, but what what skills do we believe will prevent problems later on? And that was um, a list which we put together with a, a lot of discussion with the clinic team we have at Lincoln University. What we would hope that people will do is read the book um, and read the book in its entirety because the, the, the skills aren't consecutive. Everything is shaped at the same time in the puppy in different, in different areas of the puppy's life. So what we would hope is that people would read the book and then look at their individual puppy and their individual lifestyle needs and their individual puppy's needs. So my puppy's fine with being touched. Um, I know I need to maintain that. I know it's a really important skill for my puppy to have. And I'll use the, the table at the back of the book, at the back of that chapter, to make sure that I, I don't forget about maintaining that. But if I take my puppy outside the house, he um, startles at every strange thing that he sees. So I need to now draw up a plan for my puppy in my environment to help my puppy to be able to cope with the wheelie bin on the corner and um, the, um, the plastic bags that are outside the gate. Hopefully using the hints and tips that are in the book, structure a program for their individual puppy. We felt it was really important that people could understand that these are the things that a puppy needs to learn, not the things that we as people believe we have to teach dogs. So it's, it's a subtle shift, but we believe it, we, we're trying to move the idea um, away from training to education. So we're not just training a puppy to do specific actions because we think that those are important. We're looking at what the way the puppy sees the world and helping people to try to understand the puppy's viewpoint and therefore what the puppy needs to learn. We're very lucky because at, at Lincoln University we have a well-established puppy school run by um, a couple of our members of staff and the, the um, primary trainer at the time, Hannah Wright, uh, recruited puppies from the puppy school uh, over a period of months to act as our um, demonstration of photography puppies over a number of weekends. Some of the puppies had only been through one or two classes by the time we recruited them, so some of the puppies were quite young. But um, they, they were puppies that had been in the environment before. We, we took the photographs in the room in which the puppy school is held so that they were familiar with the environment, they were relaxed and, and, and comfortable in the environment. So we, we had a list of the skills that we we'd hope, we hoped the puppies would illustrate um, and we, so we tried to, to encourage the puppies to demonstrate the specific skills. So some puppies were more predisposed to um, be comfortable lying in a crate, some puppies were more predisposed to, to want to play with a toy. So we um, we worked with a list, with the puppies, with what the puppies were comfortable with and with the assistance of, um, of Hannah, the puppy school trainer, um, to, to help the puppies to perform the behaviours. What I do want to add is that although we have photographs in the books of the puppies looking a bit worried so that we could illustrate body language of puppies that were not comfortable, at no point were any of the puppies frightened. So far we've had very good feedback, we're very pleased with the feedback, um, as well as some good reviews in the literature. We've had really positive feedback from the owners of some of the puppies who come to our puppy training, because we, um, with the life skill classes which we are, we are now running, uh, the, the owners are given a, a book with, at the classes and we've had good feedback from that. We've also had some personal feedback um, via um, colleagues um, who have um, used the book in educating their own puppies and friends who've who are using the book in educating their own puppies and who the feedback we get is that it's easy to read which was one of our main aims we want it to be a very accessible book not a highly technical book accurate scientifically as um, in every aspect that it can be but not inaccessible um, so people are saying it's easy to read and 
people are also saying that, that they like the photographs, which was a, a key point, which is, is fantastic. And also, um, people are actually saying they're using the worksheets at the end of the chapters, which is, is very encouraging. That was something that we felt was, was really important for two reasons. We didn't want this to become a recipe training book. There are excellent training books on the market and that was not the point of, of, of this book. Um, but loose lead walking we believe is a key skill for puppies to develop. Firstly because dogs spend so much time on the lead and it's unpleasant for both dogs and owners if they are pulling um, and, and not easy to control. So from a practical perspective. But secondly, again, we don't have science to back this up, but we believe that walking on a loose lead with a person, and I'm not talking about formal obedience heel work, I'm talking about just moseying down the road on a walk with a person on one end and a dog on the other end, takes a lot of self-control from the dog's perspective. So see, we see it as a means of helping dogs to learn to be self-controlled. Because if you think of it from the dog's perspective, um, the wor there's a world of things, scents and sounds and, and sights out there that we are not aware of at their level, which they are wanting to investigate. So them being able to divide their attention between the environment and us so that they're not pulling us around, they're not tangling us, uh, the, the lead around our legs, takes a lot of self-control. It also puts a lot of responsibility on the other part of the partnership, the human, to be aware of what their dog is experiencing on the lead. So we feel that the loose lead walking helps dogs to learn the skill of self-control and also helps people to be very aware of what it is that their dog is experiencing in the environment. Because we encourage people to allow their dogs to be able to sniff and investigate when they're on a lead, as long as it's within the parameters of, of being polite and being safe. This life skills we believe are relevant for dogs of all ages. We believe that these skills go across breed, across, across age group. The book, however, has been written from the perspective of shaping a clean slate. So it, the skills are designed to help people to shape behavior where there isn't already an established problem behavior. So puppies, ideal say you had a, a six or 12 month old dog who had not learned very much but didn't have any really bad habits, you might find that people could, could translate the life skills as they're written in the book directly to those older dogs. However, the, for dogs who have already developed problematic behaviors, even if they're not serious enough for an owner to consider that they need help, professional help with that problem, they will, owners may find it difficult to simply apply the skills in those situations because for those dogs what you often need is a means of interrupting or stopping the unwanted behaviour whilst you shape the wanted behaviour. So our plan is to um, have a follow-up book which looks at life skills for adult dogs where we can help people to put both parts of that jigsaw puzzle together. How you manage the unwanted behaviour at the same time as shaping the wanted behaviour, which is slightly different to shaping skills in a new puppy. Plenty of time spent uh, cleaning the white vinyl background of hundreds and hundreds of treat crumbs. The least amusing part of the photo shoot was acting as the jogger in the background of the one photo, running backwards and forwards across the white vinyl until Pete was happy that he had the shot he wanted. <laughs>